Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wisdom Chat, all things money and well-being. And today my wonderful guest is Fiona Kearns, who uh, runs a consultancy uh, business, but is a business psychologist. And uh, I thought it would be really good to have a chat with uh, Fiona today. So welcome on to Wisdom Chat, Fiona. Would you like to tell our uh, listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Absolutely. Delighted to be here, Phil. It's very exciting. I'm a business psychologist and leadership coach. I work with senior leaders, partners, CEOs, MDs, executive directors, board level execs. Um, I'm personally on a mission to create better leaders, more leaders, more women leaders specifically, because I think across the world, we need more leaders. And I see that as part of my calling is to bring that about. Um, it comes in part from the history I have in my career in terms of seeing so many uh, capable, fantastic women not always get a fair go of things. And, and that's where I specialize. Right now, I'm working with a range of clients in the charity sector, uh, GP, solicitors, accountants, partners, uh, production people, operations. It is a range, but it's those who are struggling to be the CEO they want or feel ready to be CEO sometimes. And I really care about that because um I love having a good conversation with somebody picking out their strengths and helping them stretch themselves to go forward. And it is the most yeah. fun part of my day, my week, able to help people with that. that that's wonderful, Fiona. And I, I was just thinking, um, you know, for, for our listeners benefits, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to sort of chat with you is because of some of the work that you do with um, the, the, these leaders um, bearing in mind, just recently, there was a report released with regards to the current mental health state of our nation and how that has, um, I suppose, worsened in some respects. And not surprisingly so, because we've been through the pandemic and, and it's not really gone yet. Um, you can see people's different sort of ideas and approaches to um, more freedom in life, all the lockdowns gone and restrictions, uh, yet some people don't feel uh, as free as, as others. So that's one thing. But the other thing as well is that what businesses and business leaders have been through through this period of time. And we look at the practicalities, the externals of that and think, yes, you know, we're all getting back to normal, whatever normal is. But at the same time, um, what about the business leader? What about the individual? What about those that you're working with who themselves are working with others who need their services, like the psychologists um, and the counsellors and the GPs and people like that whose workload has risen phenomenally and the demands and the pressures on them, the level of anxiety must be quite high for them. I mean, you know, what are your thoughts on that, uh, Fiona? I mean, I, you know, you've really hit, Phil, on what's going on for those people. Anybody that's at the coal face of dealing with people, you want to help people. I mean, we hear about our NHS workers who are fantastic and that's amazing. But there's a layer um, in private organisations and non-profits and so on who have been fulfilling somewhat the same role in terms of they want to protect their employees they're protecting their organization you know um donations are down profits are, you know maybe down so they're de dealing with often organizational and business challenges and the difficulties of their staff as well it's really difficult you know there can be the big narrative that you know companies don't care about people but that's not so true, I feel. It's certainly not my experience. You know, most organizations do care about their staff, even if it's somewhat self-serving. You know, they want them to be well enough to go in and do their job. But when you're looking after your team, your organization, the people within, you're often bearing the brunt of it. You know, the HR partners that, that are there, as you say, the, you know, the GPs, 
the psychologists and so on, they're doing a power of work. They're aware of the need, the huge need that's out there. And they're overwhelmed by it. And they are working as hard. They cannot work any harder. They're past it. And then they know there aren't resources. They don't want to take resources for themselves either because they feel like that would be the wrong thing to do. But who helps them? Who helps them cope? You know, where is their safety valve? Where is their support? Can they share that with others? You know, is that just adding another burden? And they don't want to be a burden. They want to be an asset. They want to help people. Um, you know, this is this is just something that has been uh, building and building and building. And there is this expectation now as, you know, the pandemic is somewhat winding down and we're all getting back to normal, as you say, what is that? That, you know, it's all getting back to the way things was, but nobody is accounting for this huge pressure people have been under and there's no processing of that. So so how do they process it? And yeah. um, they've been through, you know, a traumatic experience. Um, there have been so many changes. They're struggling themselves. They know they're ready to crumble and um, they're they're aware they know, you know, if, if somebody came to me with this, I'd be telling them to take, you know, a month off work or something like that. And yet they know they cannot do that. That's They, yeah, they yeah. don't feel that that's yeah. an option for them. So they have to keep coping. But how long yeah, can yeah. you keep coping? You yeah, need exactly. you need support and you need to, to tap into your own community and yeah. um, the people around you and so on. And I'd like to add this piece because I, I, I don't hear it discussed too much, but when we talk about, you know, the mental health challenges that are in our society, the, the truth is that central to that is connection. You know, our, our mental health, you know, our connection with other people is a key part of being healthy mentally and otherwise. And the pandemic, while we've Zoomed all the online stuff, it has taken that element away. And I don't think we're giving enough recognition of the importance of getting off your phone, going out and meeting somebody. And yes, it's more of an effort for that one-to-one, face-to-face, in-person connection. And I'd love to see people recognising that and being a bit proactive about it themselves yeah, in teams yeah. and organisations and beyond. Notwithstanding Zoom and Teams and all the others are a yeah. great tool, but I think we're missing that piece and that's yeah, central yeah. to the mental health piece. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And it's been interesting in some of the networking meetings where um, I've eventually attended in person and just hearing and seeing the people, just the fact that you're in the room, you're, you're, you're with people again. Um, the, there is something really nice about that. And you're right about the connection side, you know, um, and, and I think people have missed that connection. This whole area of isolation um, is actually being what we don't realize and appreciate is um, isolation for a human being is actually very unhealthy and connection is one of those things that actually enables us to have longevity of life so when we break those connections reduce those connections and assign ourselves to isolation which some people are still doing because of obviously um, getting COVID uh, and taking time out to isolate, I think we can all safely say it's an absolute pain in the neck because it's the very opposite to what we need as human beings. And I remember, you know, when we talk about things like mental health and, and well-being, I was looking at uh, one of the areas within just the, the realm of finances um, that people often search around and the search criteria and they search uh, one of the biggest searches has been about money anxiety how do i deal with money anxiety and um and it's been on an upward trajectory since 2004 so this is way before the pandemic yet the pandemic will have exacerbated it because there's been huge pressures financially brought to bear on businesses and also individuals and we've got the rising cost of of living phenomenally at the moment and with the um the conflict uh in ukraine the effects of that has been felt globally and so that you can imagine there's a lot of 
um, a lot of things going through people's minds. Anxiety will be something that they'll be acutely feeling at this moment in time. And yeah, the, the whole area of connection, I think, is... Uh, is a vital part of addressing some of that issue. It's not the total answer, but um, it, it has a big part to play because who do you talk to? I once said to somebody, who cares for the carer? And, um, and, it's, and it's really important that when we're actually doing the work that we do, that um, you're mindful of the fact that you need to care for yourself. And if you're not caring for yourself, how can you care for or lead others? Um, and this is where people then get into realms that, um, you know, they're, they're short, they're short tempers, they're, they're not as compassionate or empathetic. And these are qualities that leaders need to exercise, don't they? So, Absolutely. They absolutely do. And the other thing about that is that when you behave in a way that you're not proud of, you not only have those difficult um, things that you've done, but you beat yourself up after it. Then you add guilt for not being the person that you want to be. And, you know, we all do things that we're not proud of from time to time. I'd love to tell you I was a perfect being, but, you know, I'm not. Um, occasionally I'm rude when I shouldn't be and I know that's wrong and afterwards I think you know what why did you make that remark you know I can't needless. imagine that to you Fiona at well all. <laughs> you're very kind Phil but um I I just shared a, a video on LinkedIn recently about that because you know I was frustrated and stressed in a particular situation and thought I'd make this really clever remark. It's really embarrassing and I'm, I'm ashamed of it because I I don't want to be a rude person right um, but then you have the time afterwards going, oh, God, <laughs> get the opportunity. You know, there's all of this. So this is the layers that are within it. You know, we want to do a good job and we beat ourselves up. And that adds to the anxiety, too. So it's this piece that's building. And yeah. that's why we do have to mind ourselves. In a way, me sharing my embarrassing, shameful thing um, was somewhat cathartic because I thought, yeah, like we we all do this. I can't be the only person that's rude from time to time. I'm absolutely not saying I'm proud of it. I'm not. But that's that's what happens. And we have to give ourselves a bit of yeah. grace and be yeah. kind to ourselves to a degree. Yeah. Or otherwise, we're just notching it up. And, and yeah. the thing is that we think there's this fallacy out there too. Um, and I've seen people play this out in their career. They think if they have a... Uh, a, a lesser job a job with less status you know I don't want to be the manager I just want to be one of the team they think that that will you know improve things and it doesn't and and no. uh, you know and also when you when you go up the ladder so to speak you know that you'll have less things to do right maybe you'll have less people interaction but you often don't either there can be more pressure now a lot of it is something that you've applied to yourself um, yeah. but 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 it's there and it's life limiting that, that sounds like a big statement to make but it really is because it's about the quality of your life it's that stress that you're really adding to yourself and making things mm. worse when you're doing your best and I think the question there is are you doing your best and are you learning from the mistakes that yeah. you're making yeah. as well and you have to yeah. cut yourself some slack because we're just human we make mistakes um we you yes. know we have to be a little bit kinder to others but ourselves as well and i think that gets forgotten i think yeah. having your own little boardroom or team that you can contact when you you know you're having a rough day when you're doing all those things and i feel lucky that that i have that i have some people i can send a text i can you know i can phone up if i'm stuck yeah, but yeah. I, I think not everybody does. And it's not always a safe space in the yeah. business environment yeah. to do that. And, no, and that's right. And, and the other thing as well, which um, is not often really thought of, and that is um, the effects that stress and anxiety can have on our ability to function. Um, they, they often say, I mean, they deprive of us, uh, of, us of the ability to think rationally and logically 
And so we tend to react out of an emotional state when we're in those stressful and anxious uh, moments. And so therefore, um, when we're having to make key decisions or communicate something um, to people or with somebody, um, out of an emotional state can very often go so badly wrong. And like you say, you know, we're, we are human beings. I mean, I, I think of my, myself and um, the times where uh, I'd misread a situation because of where I was at. And, and so I was playing a certain narrative in my own mind about that situation and wasn't able to stand back and just look at the facts and I would say to anybody who finds themselves in that situation, stop for a moment. Don't react straight away. Stop for a moment and start to look at the facts. Even write them down, the facts, just the facts, not opinions, not my thoughts and ideas, but what are the facts? Because oftentimes when we start to rationally think around the facts, we then see a more truer picture um, and it enables us then to respond in the manner we need to respond but uh, i don't know if you've come across uh, situations like that and i know you've talked about connection being important and the uh, and i've mentioned about the the need to um perhaps just take a step back and and look at the situation more in a factual context but marrying the two i think are, are vital and you mentioned having people to talk to i mean mm. what what would your uh, advice be to uh, people who are feeling that stress and anxiety at the moment yeah um, I think my advice would be to anyone who is burnt out uh, I think it, it's I, I mean what you're suggesting Phil is a really good idea by the way and the thing about being burnt out is that you have reduced cognitive capacity you know your brain is is you know you're burnt out you you've burned the candle at both ends you have this emotional load on yourself and um, you're not operating at your best um I, i'll do a call back to, to one thing i said earlier and this would be you know are you doing your best right now i think that's a good check-in to have and um, i do see the piece of you can get very involved in a situation so getting clear on what's happening is a good one and I will often do that now I work with people who are in toxic work places as well and I will encourage people to to write things down and um, not because people are going to sue but just to check their own reality because sometimes in those difficult work situations things can happen and you doubt yourself you know, like didn't he say last week to do that? And now today he's saying he didn't say that last week. You know, even just writing that down helps you think, okay, I'm not going crazy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping a grip on that. And then it's some basic things like setting some boundaries for yourself. It's saying no to things. It's deciding what you're going to do. And it's booking some thinking time off. <laughs> I think yeah. this is a funny one, but it's it's in your business you know, booking some time off and getting into the habit of doing it, which I appreciate is really hard, especially if you're in a small business and you're doing everything yourself. But, you know, if you can book an hour off on a Friday, um, you know, if you made that commitment or, you know, on Tuesday, I won't start till 10 or you know, something like that. Carving out some time and ideally longer than that, by the way, an hour is not is not sufficient if you can carve out a half day, a day in your week, not just for thinking purely, but, you know, to work on the business, to think strategically, to think of, you know, the big things that could develop, it give your, gives yourself space. And I think that works for a couple of reasons, because one, if you've carved that time out and you've blocked it out, if you've got staff and you've let them know, listen, I'm not available for half day Friday or whatever it would be, then they know not to disturb you. You'll probably use some of that time to clean up other stuff, which is actually OK. Um, but you're also giving yourself permission to do that and, yeah. and, and do that with other things. So set boundaries, say no to things as well are really key. Um, yeah. But the other thing that I see that is really useful for my clients, and this is where having good people around you is having somebody to speak to, to say, 
you're not going crazy if if that's what's yeah. needed um you're doing the right thing because particularly when you're in senior positions like who tells the ceo or you know the the coo or the vice president or whoever you're doing a good job well probably nobody so they're wondering am i doing a good job so supporting people and helping them with that and being there is a key part of it but i think you have to set the boundaries i think you need to fact check what you do and you have to make space for yourself give yourself permission to have that space yeah. and i think communicate that to your team as well that's that's wonderful fiona and um, i think um great advice there i'm just conscious um that time has passed us by i mean we could talk for hours um, on this subject, I, I'm I'm certain of it. But some really helpful pointers there, Fiona. Thank you so much um, for giving of uh, your time for wisdom chat. I hope our listeners uh, feel a little bit more encouraged that they're not there on their own. Um, if they are going through some challenging times for themselves personally, um, and some of the tips that you've just given there, uh, I think are really key to help maintaining that well-being on an individual basis so thank you so much fiona um for our for our listeners if you want to know any more um please go to the uh, oramgoldltd.co.uk website um i will put you in touch with uh, whomever you need to um talk with um but if we can be of any further assistance then then please do contact us through the website and fiona Thank you very much for your time. Lovely to chat with you and have a great rest of the day. Oh, thanks so much, Phil. It's been a lot of fun to speak with you today.